day grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in physical science. In this lesson we're going to carry on with our electrochemistry. In fact we're almost finished with the main body of our electrochemistry. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through the extraction of aluminium. Remember we've done quite a lot of the other cells. We've done the chloroalkali cells um, in the last lesson and we did the copper extraction. Now we need to talk about the extraction of aluminium. And remember I said to you that if you look in the CAPS guidelines or CAPS document compared to the old curriculum, they say this actually isn't part of the new curriculum. However, if you look in the exam guidelines, they do say in the redox section, in the electrochemistry section, they do say that you actually need to know the electrochemistry with respect to your chloral alkali industry, the extraction of aluminium and the extraction of copper, which is why I'm teaching it to you. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through this and then after that, we're going to go through a whole bunch of exam paper questions. Guys, I really think that the best way to prepare for um, physical science, and I've been teaching it for many years, is to basically learn your theory, okay, make sure you understand and know your theory and then go practice exam paper questions. And if you're going through your exam paper question and you realize you don't know your theory, then go back and restudy your theory and then come back and redo the questions, okay? So that's what you do and it's the same with maths, okay? Practice, practice. Maths more practice than science because there's less theory to learn. But that is the best way and it's the biggest tips I can give you guys. Make sure you understand, you know your theory, understand it and then go practice. Okay, so let's talk about the extraction of aluminium. Okay, so aluminium is a prime metal used in industry. Everything that you can think of, your food tins, your, um, you know when they say aluminium roofs, and when they say tin roofs, they actually mean aluminium. Um, it's light and strong, it's used in the manufacture of airplanes, of motor cars, um, of your tins for food, for your roofs, um, for your coke tins, everything that you can think of that has got a bendy metal in it, 90% chance that it's aluminium. Okay, it's found in deposits of bauxite, which is not actually indigenous to South Africa. We don't have, as far as I know, big deposits of bauxite in South Africa. So what they do is they import it from Australia. It's kind of expensive, but it's better to import the bauxite than to import the aluminium. Okay, then what they do, um, sorry, so the bauxite is a mixture of silica, iron oxide and hydrated alumina. Please note that alumina is totally different from aluminum, which is the American way of saying aluminium because apparently they cannot do this eye thing. Okay, sorry. So, <laughs> so alumina is totally different and we'll go through what the formula for that is in a second. There you go. It's Al2O3.xH2O. So it's actually an aluminium oxide with a water of crystallization attached to it. Okay. That is what alumina is. Alumina is, and it's said hydrated because there's your water of crystallization. So alumina is actually aluminium, well, not aluminium oxide. If it was, then it wouldn't have the name alumina, but it's Al2O3 with your water of crystallization in. So it's, it's like a crystallized form of aluminium with alum, aluminium in it. Okay, so now let's talk about the extraction. So what happens is this is the process that produces 99% pure aluminium. And if you're wondering where that happens in South Africa, think Richards Bay. Richards Bay. And if you don't know where that is, that's in KwaZulu-Natal. Okay, 99% of our aluminium comes from Richards Bay in South Africa. And this process produces 99% pure aluminium, which is amazing. Okay, so what happens is aluminium or the alumina and aluminium is melted along with cryolite. Cryolite. And yes, you need to know the name and you need to know the formula. So what's so special about cryolite? Well, cryolite, it acts as an electrolyte. Okay, and more importantly, it lowers the melting point of the aluminium. Aluminium's normal melting point is about 2000 degrees Celsius, but when the ore is dissolved in the molten cryolite, it actually comes down to 950 degrees Celsius, which is huge. I mean, that's half the, the half the temperature. Um, and I want you to think about this, okay? I don't know if you guys remember this, but from from 
kinetic energies and things. But if we're talking in a chemical rate and reaction, okay, your kinetic energy is proportional to your temperature. In fact, temperature is a measure of your average kinetic energy. And an increase in temperature of just 10 degrees Celsius doubles your reaction rate. Reaction rate, okay? So think about the amount of energy, extra energy that's going to be needed in this thing if we have to not only go from 950 degrees to 2000 degrees, the amount of energy that's going to be required to break up the stuff and dissolve it. So therefore, like I said, the cryolite acts not only as an electrolyte, but it lowers the melting point and dissolves the ore. And it lowers it from 2,000, approximately 2,000 degrees Celsius to approximately 1,000 degrees Celsius, approximately. Okay. And what that means is that there is obviously a lot less energy required for the cell to work, okay, which is important because it actually is a huge drain on the electricity of this of the country. Okay, then what you have is you have carbon rods. Okay, these are carbon rods. They are carbon for the simple reason that they are inert. What does inert mean? It means that it doesn't react. It doesn't react. It doesn't participate in the reaction. Okay, so carbon rod anodes provide site for the oxidation of the O2- and F- ions. Okay, the oxygen ions and the fluoride ions. Okay, so oxygen and fluorine gas are given off at the anodes. So you've got oxygen gas and you've got fluorine gas given off at the anodes. Okay, which this results in anode con uh, consumption because actually what happens is the oxygen over here reacts with the carbon and it forms carbon dioxide. So you end up giving off carbon dioxide and fluorine gas, which are not two of the healthiest gases to be given off um, into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide increases your greenhouse gas, is part of your greenhouse gases and increases the greenhouse gas effect, which is not good for us and increases, increases the heat of the atmosphere. And fluorine gas is actually toxic as well. So anyway, so this is the reaction that occurs. You've got two O2 minus, okay, inside this. Reforms O2 gas plus four electrons, okay. And you've got 2F minus forms fluorine gas plus two electrons. So that's all happens at the anode. And remember, these are the anodes. And this is half oxidation is happening at the anodes. And remember, how do we remember that? On an, an ox is how to remember that. An, an ox, as in big animal, an ox. Okay, right. Now, at the cathode, now this is what's interesting about the cell. The cathode is actually the cell lining and it's also made from graphite carbon, okay? So the whole of the cell is lined with graphite and that is attached to the negative end of the battery, okay, as such, and therefore it there is the cathode. And yeah, the aluminium 3 plus ions are reduced and they form aluminium, Okay, they form molten aluminium, because remember it's quite hot still, still 950 degrees Celsius. And the molten aluminium just slides out, okay, just pours out. So in real life, what actually happens is this is slightly tilted down so that it can pour out over there, okay. So this is the equation that happens at the cathode, Al3 plus plus three electrons gives you aluminium. Okay, now the aluminium fluoride electrolyte is stable and remains in the molten state. Okay, so the overall reaction is aluminium oxide, okay, forms four aluminiums plus three oxygens. Okay, so that's the overall reaction for your aluminium, that your aluminium oxide reacts to form four aluminium molecules which are in the solid state and three oxygen molecules which are in the gas state. Okay, so let's talk about this. First of all, it's endothermic, which means it requires a lot of energy and a lot of electricity to drive the process, okay? It is very, very expensive, very expensive. Um, 
Also, what's important about this is we notice that it gave off fluorine gas and it gave off carbon dioxide. And like I said, carbon dioxide is basically, the problem with carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. So therefore, it is not good to give off carbon dioxide. So that is a problem, a major, major problem. Okay, a couple of other things you need to think about is the fact that the fluorine gas it gives off is toxic. Okay, um, and what else? So it's endothermic, large amounts of electricity. What are the advantages? Just let's talk about the advantages. We hardly ever talk about the advantages, so that's what they might ask. The advantages are obviously there are lots of jobs available. Okay, which is good for us, we're good for South Africa. The fact that we produce aluminium, which is quite a high technology, it doesn't seem like it, but it is quite a high technology product, and therefore we can sell it, okay, or use it in our country. Okay, but the problem is this, this large amounts of electricity in South Africa. I'm talking specifically about South Africa now, okay, we know that we've got problems with our electricity supply. So the problem is, and this is, a problem in South Africa is that a large chunk of our electricity is designated to be sent to the areas of industry which will produce our, of economic wealth to the country. So for example, the production of aluminium is very good for our country. So therefore, large amounts of electricity are going to be sent off to that area or designated to that area. What does that mean? That means that there's less electricity available for us people at home that are, I don't know, trying to cook supper after a hard day at work, etc, etc. Okay, so that is a problem. Okay, so they use the large amounts of electricity and they get first they get first prize at having their first position in electricity allocation. Okay, so now I thought the best thing to do, like I said, was go through a couple of questions, exam type, whoopsie, of exam type questions, because first of all, you'll notice that there's different types of cells that we have spoken about. There's in there with a ver, and here's one year with a power supply. So we're going to talk about these different ex exam type questions and I want to go through them with you because I'm hoping that after we've gone through enough of these exam type questions you will see that a a pattern emerges and b that it's not actually that difficult to do these questions and hopefully then you will do them better in the exams because this is actually I went through the report of the last couple of years for the paper twos and these electrochemistry questions don't, aren't well done Okay, there's a lot of misunderstanding in that. So let's go through it, okay? This is in the cell below, there's a nickel electrode is connected to a magnesium electrode. The cell is set up under standard conditions. Both electrodes are placed in the electrolytes and connected by salt bridge. So basically it's a nice complete circuit, do you agree? Okay, so it's right down the energy conversion that occurs in the cell. Do you see there's no actual power supply? So obviously this is providing the power supply. So the energy conversion we're talking about is chemical potential energy to electrical energy. It's chemical to electrical. Okay, define the term electrolyte. Basically this is a liquid that allows the transfer of electricity. And this is important due to the presence. This is the part that's important of free ions of free ions. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again, grade 12s, there are no electrons, okay, yes, there are electrons, but there are no electrons flowing in the electrolyte, there are no electrons flowing in the salt bridge, there are no electrons flowing through this electrolyte, the electrons flow in the outer circuit, 
this bit here where the wire is, okay, this blue bit, that's the only part where the electrons are flowing. The thing that happens here is that there's a transfer of ions. Ions move through from the one electrode into the solution, through the salt bridge, into the solution, etc., etc. In fact, they don't go through. Some electrons, elect some electrons. Some ions travel this way, some ions travel that way, or vice versa. I mean, I haven't worked this out yet. So, do you understand that is what's going on here, okay? You need to be careful of that. Okay, now, now I've done my little rant. It says, which electrode A or B is the anode? So, now what we need to do is go look at our redox table, and it's pretty damn small, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually just going to just a second. I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to make it bigger. It's too small, way too small. I don't like it that small. Better. Okay, so we're gonna go back. Yes, good. Okay, so what are we looking for? We're looking for something with nickel and we're looking for something with magnesium. So if we go look over here, we can go, oh, look, here's magnesium. And guys, I know this is really small, especially on your screens. So what did I say? I said you need to have your redox table with you, and this is table 4B. We only use 4B. Okay, well, I only use 4B, and all the teachers I know only use 4B. If you're being taught with 4A, that's awesome. Nothing wrong with that. Just that I'm teaching 4B. Okay, right. So there's your magnesium, okay, and there's your nickel. Okay, so if you look at your redox table, at your redox table, it actually tells you something. It tells you which way is increasing or which way is being oxidized, okay? But now, what do we know? We know that the reaction for it to be, for it to be spontaneous, I'm just going to go through this all for you, it has to form a C. So it has to go from magnesium through to magnesium 2 plus, then it has to go down to nickel plus, and then it has to go to nickel, okay? That's the order that this reaction has to go for this to be happening. So in other words, this reaction has to be going like this. Magnesium has to be going to magnesium two plus, plus two electrons, which means that the nickel, at the nickel electrode, it has to be nickel two plus, plus two electrons, is forming nickel. That is what's supposed to be happening, okay, if this is a spontaneous reaction. So do you agree that magnesium is giving away two electrons? Okay, it's giving away two electrons. So what do we know? We know oil rig, we know anox, and we know red cat. And what did I say to you guys? I said to you that if you know oil rig, Anox, red cat, and how to read this table, you're A for away for most of the questions on this exam type, this exam section. Okay, so oxidation is the loss of electrons, and oxidation occurs at the anode. So this dude here is the anode, and this dude here is the cathode. There we go. So now it says which electrode A and B is the anode? B is the anode, B, B is the anode, there we go. Now it says write down the reduction half reaction that occurs in the cell. So we just said that the anode is oxidation, so this is the reduction. Reduction is a gain of electrons, so therefore the reduction half reaction is going to be Ni2 plus, plus two electrons goes to nickel. Okay, that's the reduction half reaction. Okay, happy with that. Now it says calculate the reading on the voltmeter for the cell. Calculate the reading on the voltmeter for the cell. So what are we doing? We're using E theta again, okay? So we've got minus 2.37 here, and we've got minus 0.25. So if you go look on your formula sheet, and again, grade 12s, I stress with, to you guys, please, whenever you're studying science, I don't care if you're watching the video or if you're watching your teacher in class or you're actually doing it yourself, always have the following things you should have in front of you and with you. Paper, pen, or pencil, whatever you want to write with. Paper, pen, um, a calculator, and your formula sheets. Okay, you have to have them. And I want you to just practice using them so it becomes like second nature to you. Okay, so now it says E theta equals E of the cathode 
minus E of the anode. It says along to a bunch of other ones as well, but this is one of the ones it says. So cathode is the bottom one, so again, again minus 0, 0,25 minus, remember your brackets, minus 2,37. So that becomes minus 0, 0,25 minus times minus is plus 2,37. So what does it become? It becomes 2 comma, oh God, can I do this? 1, 2 volts. 2 comma, 1, 2 volts. There you go. So what do we know from that? We know obviously that essence is a positive, that it's a spontaneous reaction, but we need it anyway. Okay, so this is, and that is the voltage given off by the cell. Okay, now it says the voltmeter is replaced with an ammeter. Hmm. Okay, so this is now an ammeter. Okay, in which direction do the electrons flow in the external circuit? Write down only from A to B or B to A. Now, remember, Great Tolls, I said it's actually quite easy to remember which way the electrons flow because they always flow from the anode to the cathode. But it makes sense as well because the anode is giving away electrons. The electrons are going up here, wee, and the cathode is gaining the electrons. They're going wee. So, therefore, the answer is from B to A, from B to A, but just, it's alphabetical, it's always anode to cathode, always anode to cathode, okay? Now, it says explain the function of the salt bridge in the cell by referring to movement of electrons and ions, okay? Now, grade 12s, do you remember that I said to you when you were teaching, when I was teaching this section, that it doesn't matter whether they ask you for if they give you three marks for this or two marks for it or whatever, you need to explain this properly and you need to include two things. Okay, the couple of things. The first thing you need to say is that the salt bridge completes the circuit. You have to say that. Okay, right. Secondly, what is happening is, okay, now you need to explain this nicely, okay, and it depends on how many marks there are, but let's pretend this is a nice question of about five or, five or so marks, okay? So it's saying you need to explain it with respect to the movement of electrons and ions, and what they're trying to say by that is what I said earlier. You are now, they're trying to say to you, do the electrons flow through the salt bridge or ions flow through the salt bridge? So you need to explain that you know the difference, okay? So you need to say, well, the electrons travel through the external circuit, the external circuit, okay, from B to A, okay, um, the, okay, I'm getting there, the Nickel electrolyte becomes more positive, okay? Because what happens is that, oh no, it becomes less positive, becomes less positive, less, less positive. Because what happens is the nickel ions in the solution, two plus ions, are gonna be attracted to the nickel, so it's gonna build this nickel up. Okay, and there's going to be less nickel 2 plus ions, so it's going to be less positive. So the negative ions, I'm running out of space here, let me just erase everything. So what's happening here is that this here is nickel 2 plus ions, okay, and they get attracted to this electrode which is negative. And the nickel 2 plus adds the two electrons to become nickel. So this, nickel, nickel. So this actually gets fatter and fatter, okay? But what happens is then, this becomes less positive, okay? Or more negative, which you wanna say it. So what happens is the salt bridge, okay, allows cations to flow, positive ions, cations to flow from the salt bridge, from the salt bridge, into the nickel electrolyte to balance the charge, okay? Similarly, similarly, 
Okay, obviously, similarly, what's happening here is that we've got the electrons coming along here. So what happens is that this is losing electrons and magnesium is going magnesium two plus plus two electrons. So this is becoming more positive. Similarly, so the magnesium two plus half cell is becoming more positive, right? So what it happens then is that the negative ions, so therefore the anions, the anions from the salt bridge move into the that half cell. And what do they do? They maintain the neutrality of the half cells. I'm sorry about the horrible hand wring. Um, sorry, but I'm hoping you understand what I was saying. So basically what happens with the salt bridge is, one, it completes the circuit, full stop, end of story. Secondly, as the nickel, okay, as the nickel two plus ions are going from the solution on, and it gains the, two, the electrons from this electrode, okay, and that, then it becomes nickel, okay, so nickel builds up here. Okay, but this now means that there's less nickel 2 plus ions in the solution. So the positive ions travel from along the salt bridge and out of the salt bridge. So let's pretend that the salt bridge is made up of, I don't know, potassium chloride. So it's K plus and Cl minus ions. The K plus ions are going to go into this solution because they're trying to fill up the space of the nickel 2 plus ions to keep this neutral. Okay, it must maintain neutrality. At exactly the same time, the magnesium is going, breaking up into magnesium two plus ions, which are now in solution, and you've got two minus, and the electrons are going along this along this wire. Okay, when that happens, now we've got extra magnesium two plus ions. So this is becoming more and more positive. So what happens is the chloride ions from the salt bridge travel into the solution to make it back to neutral, okay, to get the neutrality back. Okay, so the whole point of the salt bridge is one completes the circuit, two maintains the neutrality of the two half cells by, by allowing the free flow of ions between the two, by allowing the free flow of ions, that's it, full stop. Whew. Okay, now it says, write down the cell notation. Okay, so luckily we've remembered that this is the anode and this is the cathode. Okay, and when we want to write down the cell, cell notation, it is always anode. I always joke with my students to go anode juice, but it's the electrolyte, anode electrolyte. Salt bridge, cathode juice, or cathode electrolyte and then cathode, okay? Unless, of course, it's a hydrogen half cell, but that's not in this case. So in this case, it would be the anode is magnesium, goes to magnesium two plus, salt bridge, and then it's nickel two plus, goes to nickel. We haven't finished because we have to say, it says it's at standard conditions, so we have to say one mole per decimeter cubed underneath here, and underneath here, one mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, we're saying that these solutions are at the standard condition. You're welcome to, a lot of people teach it this way, and you're welcome to do it like this, magnesium bracket, I mean slash, magnesium two plus bracket, one mole per decimeter cubed, salt bridge, nickel two plus bracket, one mole per decimeter cubed, bracket, bracket, nickel, you get the point. Okay, it really doesn't matter which way you write it, as long as you remember to write this. If you don't write it, you lose marks, so please remember it. Okay, Whew. okay, that was a nice question, nice long question. Let's have a look at this question. It says, bauxite ore, okay, so it's the thing that we were studying earlier today, okay, bauxite ore is dissolved in molten cryolite and purified to Al203, which is your alumina, okay, your alumina. From the bauxite, pure molten aluminium is obtained. The cell used in the extraction of aluminium is shown. Okay, but we're used to this one. It's pretty cool. We understand it. Okay, then it tells you what the net cell reaction is, and you'll see that their net cell reaction is slightly different from our net cell reaction, but it's fine. It's fine. We can cope with that. Okay. 
But it says, so we've got two aluminium oxide, Al2O3 or alumina, plus carbon gives you aluminium plus carbon dioxide, okay? It says write down the reduction half reaction for the cell. So remember that this dude here is the what? This is our anode, okay? And this dude here is out of the whole of this electrode here. They've got an iron electrode, so they're set up slightly different. Okay, there's no carbon in this one, which is why they've got carbon in their system. Okay, is the cathode. Okay, so remember that what is happening, we're going from aluminium 2 plus to aluminium. Okay, I mean aluminium. So this reaction shows you that you're going from aluminium 3 plus to aluminium. So remember, what is reduction? Reduction is gaining electrons. So we're going from aluminium 3 plus to aluminium. So that is our reduction half reaction waiting to happen. And you can either look for it over here, or you can realize that in order to go from aluminium 3 plus to aluminium, all we need to do is add three electrons. So I can rewrite this. Sorry, just in case you're wondering how I knew I went from aluminium 3 plus to aluminium, first of all, okay, I must admit, it's knowledge that I know, but then also if you look over here, where's aluminium? It's over here somewhere. Is it not? Sure it was. It is on here somewhere. Okay, but if you look over here, you've got Al203. Remember that Al203, when they break up, they split. So this becomes Al3 plus an O2 minus. So because remember, that's how you write this. You swap them. So if I knew I was going from aluminium 3 plus in that form to aluminium. And that's how I knew. Okay. There it is. I knew it was on it. Okay, right. It's over there. Okay, so now let us write the half reaction. So it is going to be, very obviously, aluminium 3 plus plus 3 electrons goes to aluminium. And again, I'd like to stress to you guys that on the redox table, there's a double arrow. Okay, the arrow does this. And what that arrow is showing you is that this reaction can go both ways, okay, which we knew, okay. But once it's inside the actual cell, once it's busy being part of that cell, you cannot then go right both ways because then your reaction is going to go ee, 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 and you're not actually going to get anything out. So you need to show that it's going one specific way. So you need to write that arrow in, okay. Now it says which one of the electrodes A or B should be connected to the positive terminal of the power supply. Okay, well I know that carbon dioxide is being formed over here and I know that reduction is occurring over here. So therefore I know that this is going to be reduction and reduction occurs at the cathode because of red cat. Okay, and that needs to get electrons. It needs to be getting electrons. So this needs to be the negative end. So A has to be the negative end. Another way of thinking about it is that carbon dioxide is forming because of the presence of oxygen. So what is actually actually happening here is your O um, two minus is joining up to form O two. So it's giving. I mean O two. O2. So what is happening is it's giving off electrons. So if it's giving off electrons, it's because it's, this is a positively charged thing. Okay, the negative electro negatively charged oxygen is attracted to the positively charged electrode, which is attached attached the positive end of the battery. So therefore, this cathode has to be attached to the negative end of the battery. So that's the negative. It says write down the formula of the oxidizing agent in this reaction. Okay. Now, let's think about this. Oxidizing agent, oxidizing agent is being reduced, is being reduced. Okay, that's what's happening. So what here is being reduced is the aluminium 3 plus. The aluminium 3 plus is being reduced, so therefore it's the aluminium 3 plus. Sure, okay, now it says, how's the time? Okay, we've got time. Consider the electrochemical cell. Okay, so again, we've got a voltmeter. It says in the first electrochemical cell, okay, it's actually a half cell. Do you agree? Okay, no. Okay, sorry. In the first electrochemical cell, the chromium chromium 3 plus half cell, so this is CR3 plus, is connected to an AG, AG plus, AG plus 
half cell, okay? Both electrolytes are nitrates under standard conditions, okay? So it's silver nitrate and chromium nitrate. Good, thank you for sharing. The initial voltmeter reading is 1,54 volts, 54 volts. That's quite nice of them to tell us. Initial voltmeter reading is 1,54, okay? It says, what type of electrochemical cell is this? Well, it's either l cell, or in other words, either it, yeah, either it's a galvanic cell or it's an electrolytic cell. Now, electrolytic cell is one that converts electricity into chemistry, into chemicals, chemical energy, whereas a galvanic cell is a battery. And this, because it has a voltmeter, is a galvanic cell. Okay, write the standard conditions under which the cell operates. Okay, so obviously the temperature has to be 25 degrees Celsius, or you could say 297 Kelvin. The pressure, if there was a pressure, would be one atmosphere. And the concentration has to be one mole per decimeter cubed. The concentration of the electrolyte has to be one mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, that's done. Now it says write down the half reaction that occurs at the anode. Okay, so now we need to go to our redox table and we need to find chromium and chromium 3 plus. Okay, they tell us it's 3 plus. And we have to find Ag going to Ag plus or vice versa. And okay, now you need to be very careful when you look at your, your half reaction table. And again, I'm actually going to skip through. Oh man. And oh, it's driving me insane. Not that one. That one. I'm going to make it bigger so we can see it. Remind me to make them all bigger. Okay, it's a bit bigger. So we're looking for chromium 3 plus and chromium and silver and silver plus. So if you look very carefully, you need to be careful because here is a chromium 2 plus going to chromium, but here is a chromium 3 plus going to chromium. Okay, chromium 3 plus going to chromium. So there's the one. Okay, and the other one is silver and silver plus, silver and silver plus, which is over here. There it is. Okay, now again, to help you answer this question, I'm going to do it nice and slowly and start by saying that you should be drawing a C, okay? If you can draw this with a C, which we're assuming you can, then it's a spontaneous reaction. So this reaction should be CR goes to CR3 plus plus three, three electrons. And this dude is going to be Ag plus, plus an electron goes to Ag. I'm not balancing, I'm just saying what has happening in each of these reactions, okay? So now what is the question? The question is write down the half reaction that occurs at the anode. Right, so anode, we've got oil rig, we've got anox, and we've got red cat. So we want oxidation to occur at the anode. Oxidation is the loss of reactions. Chromium is losing electrons. This is the anode, which means this is the cathode. Why? Because chromium is giving away three electrons to become chromium three plus. So therefore it is being oxidized. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. And therefore this is the anode. Okay, done. Write down the net ionic reaction. Okay, so now we're going to balance those electrons. Okay, so let's do that. So we've got Cr goes to Cr3 plus plus three electrons. And we've got Ag plus plus an electron goes to Ag. So do you agree that this chromium is giving away three electrons, but silver is only gaining one at a time? So what we need to do is balance it, and you do it just like you do it in mass, you multiply. So this becomes a three, this becomes a three, and this becomes a three, right? And then what you do is you cancel. Okay, so those three electrons cancel with those three electrons. And what do we end up with? We end up with three Ag plus, plus Cr goes to Cr3 plus plus 3 Ag. Okay, and there you go. That is the overall net ionic reaction. So when they say net ionic reaction, it means that you can still have your pluses. Okay, if they ask you for the complete balanced reaction, then obviously you can't have your pluses. But guys, the complete reaction with, uh, with the spectator ions is not part of the curriculum. So the, they should be asking you for the net ionic reaction. Now it says, 
how will then okay you know what this is actually quite a complicated question so what we're going to do is i'm going to continue with this tomorrow these parts of the question i'm going to continue tomorrow okay great 12s um i hope that you now understand a bit more about your electrochemistry we like i said we are going to do a couple more questions on the, the redox and electricity, and I think I'm going to find one more in the hydrogen fuel cell to include in this, and then we're going to move on. And I think we're going to move on to rates of reaction. Okay, I think that's a list. I've got a list. Okay, have a wonderful evening. Cheers.